All right, so our guest speaker for today is Dr. Virginia Stomer. Um, she is the Associate Director for Curriculum Development and Design. Dr. Stomer serves as the Associate Director for Curriculum Development and Design, and in her role, she manages and oversees areas of campus need related to course-based assessment, large classroom teaching, experiential learning, service learning, positive psychology, and well-being pedagogy, and active learning and engaged teaching. She also represents the unit in the opportunities related to meeting college and department level requests for support with redesigning academic courses and infusing best practices in teaching and learning within co-curricular experiences. Dr. Soma earned her doctorate in English literature at the University of Tennessee, focusing on medieval and Renaissance drama. She holds a master's in neuroscience studies from the University of Alabama and a bachelor's degree in English and history from UNC Chapel Hill. So welcome, uh, Dr. Stommer, and um, yes, take it away, please. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for that, that introduction. Um, well, I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here today and, and, and talk with you all. Um, designing effective research posters is something I have been uh, working with students on for, for quite some time. I've worked with students in the chemistry REU that um, has taken place here in, in years past. And um, before I was in my, my, my current position that you just heard about, I uh, worked with um, an, an honors program. I oversaw an honors program here at the University of Tennessee that um, required students to create posters as their sort of capstone project. Um, so it's something that I, I, that I really enjoy doing and really enjoy working with students on. Um, so one thing I'll say is, is uh, the first part of this is not super interactive, so I'll probably do a lot of talking, but please feel free to either, we're a small group, so feel free to either unmute yourself or pop it in the chat. I've got my chat box open on my other screen, um, so I'll try to, to toggle back and forth if you have questions, but um, we will do some time for some talking and reviewing. Um, the way I like to run these sessions is I'm going to give you a lot of information up front. You don't need to memorize all of it. Um, we'll, we'll send the slides out afterwards. But also, the most important part for me, what I think is most useful is at the end when we look at some poster examples and think about what's going on here, what's, what's going well, what's not going well. I find that to be the most useful part. Um, so if we're moving fairly quickly through here, um, feel free to, to stop me and say, hey, I have a question about this. Um, but also know that we're going to work on looking at this in application um, in sort of the second half. So, so today we're gonna start talking about designing effective research posters. Effective research posters do a couple of things. They tell your story all on its own. Um, the whole story of your research from the beginning to the end. Um, and so we're gonna think today about how can you do that in a really effective way visually. And I think this is, it's a fun medium, but it's different if you've not done it before. It looks really different than uh, a traditional research paper or essay uh, because of the visual components um, and because of the limited amount of space that you have. So the first part of designing an effective research poster is to create the poster itself. Um, and there are a couple of different ways to do this. Um, you can do it on your own. And the easiest way to do it on your own is in Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, that tends to be a format most people have access to, at least through their universities. You can download um, Microsoft PowerPoint here if you're a student at the University of Tennessee. Some disciplines, particularly those with more advanced design requirements like art and architecture and engineering, sometimes students in in those fields, we'll use programs like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, or InDesign. I will admit that I am not well enough versed in those programs to talk you through how to do that. But if you're in one of those programs, uh, you are likely familiar with the format and can likely create a page that is the correct size um, and design your poster from, from there. For most people, though, most of the time, you're gonna be working in Microsoft PowerPoint. And so what you do, instead of creating a series of slides, is you take one slide, you set it to poster size. So you're gonna set it to a 36 by 42 or a 42 by 36. Usually, if you're at the University of Tennessee and you're printing out your poster at the University of Tennessee, that's generally the size that we create our posters. So that's about the, the size that our, our printers can print. 
um, always check any conference you go to if you're ever doing a poster presentation always check with them because different conferences might have slightly different requirements for their posters but but 36 by 42 or 42 by 36 is fairly standard and so you can go into PowerPoint and set up a single blank slide so it's that size. And then once you, you've done that, you are essentially designing, you'll, you'll see that your, your scale, the slide you're looking at is going to be at about 25%, because obviously if you pull it up to 100%, it'd be bigger than your computer screen. Um, so you're, you're designing sort of a mini version of your poster that will print out full size. Um, so you can do that on your own. Um, by setting up the, the slide to be the right size, and then you can use text box, boxes and create the color scheme and everything that you want the way that you want it to be. What I find is probably the best and the easiest, particularly if design is not necessarily your thing, is to use poster templates. And you can find them out on the internet, but, the, but generally the best thing to do, particularly if you're doing research at a university or for an institute, is to use that university or that institute's template. Um, so I've linked here to the official UT template, and let me, um, when you click on this link, it'll give you two options, one for vertical posters, one for horizontal posters, so depending on how you want to design your poster. And when you open it up, you'll see Okay, so this is the horizontal template. Is everybody seeing that? I gotta look at that. Okay, perfect. So you'll notice that there are three slides here. This is not because you're creating your poster on three slides, but what it's doing is it's giving you three options for your creating your poster. So this first one is a two column poster. The second one is a three column poster. And the third one is a four column poster. I would say 80 to 90% of the posters I see are three columns. The, the, that tends to be the most common, but, but some posters work better as two and some work better as four. But one of the things that you'll notice about this is that the slide is already the correct size. So you don't have to resize it. They've already created a title box for you with subtitles. You've got your um, main text, you've got your columns. They're already created, they're evenly spaced. So essentially all of the design work is done for you and you don't have to do anything else. All you have to do is start working on putting your information in. For me, this is the best way to do it. It's also important to use these templates anytime you are representing the university outside of, um, of the university to keep it on brand. So when people come up to your poster, not only do they know what your poster is about, but they know where you're from. Um, this is particularly important as you go on and maybe go to graduate school, um, but get a job at a university or get a job at a lab or an institute um, where your uh, organization is supporting you to go to these conferences, so you're being paid for your research or being paid to do your presentations, you want to make sure that you're representing your organization. And so any, um, I know some of you are here this summer from other universities. So UT is not unique in having its own poster template. All of your universities likely have them as well. If you do um, a little bit of Googling or, or visit your Office of Undergraduate Research, or sometimes um, it might not be through your Office of Undergraduate Research. Um, we have ours through our Office of Undergraduate Research, but we also have them on our university's brand website. Um, so the website that tells us what colors we can use and what fonts we can use also has templates for things like PowerPoint presentations and poster presentations and those kinds of things. So there are a couple of places you might find it at your university, but I can guarantee you every university, they have one of these. Um, and again, it, it makes it a little bit easier because if, if designing in PowerPoint is not your strong suit, this takes all of the guesswork out of it. Okay, I'm gonna come back to my, my PowerPoint now. So again, I, I think templates are the way to go. <laughs> Uh, personally, as someone who does not have, have very good artistic or creative abilities, but there are ways that you can design your own poster if that's something that you would prefer to do. And so once you've got your poster set up, you want to think about size. Again, this is, this is one of the many ways in which posters differ from a paper is that people are going to be looking at your poster from a distance. And so you want to make sure that 
they can read everything. And again, the nice thing about the template is most of the font is already, already sized for you. So you don't have to do too much thinking about this, but you usually want your font to be for your title about 80 to 120 point um, for your subheadings, 48 to 68 and for your text, 32 to 42. Um, and again, the reason there's a range here is because as, as you know, different fonts look different um, and are kind of different sizes. And, and some of this will also depend on if you're you know, trying to squeeze, squeeze space in there, but um, you, you want people to be able to read at least your title and your subheadings from probably about five, five feet or so away from, from the poster because that will get them interested um, and want to come over. And even when they're reading your main text, they're not going to be necessarily up as close to it as they would be, you know, reading, reading a paper when you can have sort of a, a 11, 12, 13 point font. So you want to make sure you're, you're attuned to the size of your font to make sure that it's readable from a distance. Um, you also, as you're formatting your title, you want to make sure that you include your name, um, any other co-authors on your poster. So sometimes posters are group projects, sometimes they're individual projects and any affiliation. So again, your university affiliation, if you're using the branded template, you've already got that in there. Um, but it's, it's helpful also to have it next to your name as well. One of the reasons this is really important is because often with poster presentations, there's a time where you'll be standing next to your poster giving your presentation, but there's likely also going to be a time where um, you leave your poster, um, even if it's just for a quick water break. Uh, but sometimes you might be going into a conference session. Sometimes they leave the posters up so people can come see them after the presentations are over. And sort of in a, in a selfish way, it's really important to have your name on there because if somebody walks by your poster when you're not there and they think it's really interesting, you want to make sure that they know who you are. Uh, this can be important for being recruited for, for jobs, for graduate school, those kinds of things. That, that's kind of thinking about your, your title uh, areas, making sure you've got your, your name and your affiliations. You always also want to make sure that you don't want your title to be too lengthy. Um, you want it to be something people who are at the conference can understand. So think about who your audience is. Um, if it's a highly technical conference, it's okay to have a highly technical title. If it's not a highly technical conference, you want to think about how can I accurately describe my research and a quick short title that people of you know, this level of knowledge, maybe we're all in the same discipline, but I'm in a particular specialty, or maybe it's a multidiscipline conference. So you know, what can people at the conference understand um, if they come up to my poster? And then as you're thinking past your title and you're looking at your subtitles, use generic and easy to follow subheadings. Um, for STEM, this is really easy. <laughs> Um, and social sciences as, as well. The communities and, and arts and, and pre-professional programs get a little bit more difficult. But with STEM, you want to think about you know, your introduction, your uh, methods, your results, your discussion, those kinds of titles. Because then if I'm looking at your poster and I'm really interested in what your results are, I can go straight to that area. Um, if I'm looking at your poster and I think, oh, I wonder, you know, um, what theories did they use? What do they base this on? I might go to your introduction or maybe your methods section, uh, but make sure that your poster is easy to navigate. You know, moving from point A to point B, I know exactly what's in these different sort of areas or boxes within your poster. Um, so then once you've got your titles, you've got your subheadings, you have to think about the actual text. And this is probably, I think, the number one hardest thing about a poster, because most of you are doing research that you could write down in at least 20 pages, if not more. Um, put it in a journal article, publish it. Um, you wanna keep your text to usually no more than 900 words. That's, that's what I say is generally a maximum. Some people will tell you even less. Some people will say 600, I've seen as low as 500. Um, but you really want to dial in your text. And if you're trying to think in your, your head, you know, what does 900 words look like? Most um, college students write 300 to 350 words per page. So you're looking at two and a half to three pages of text, which again, as you all know, not a lot. That's not a lot of text when you're thinking about a, a large experiment or 
research project that you've undertaken. And so what you want to think about is what words do I absolutely have to have in this poster for it to make sense, for it to flow, and cut every single thing else out. And one of the ways that you can do that is instead of writing in paragraph form, think about using bullets, highlighting some of your headings um, to present information in a visually appealing and what I like to call an easily digestible manner. Um, and use, use lists. So when you're doing those bulleting, use lists instead of paragraphs. That way you don't have to write out full sentences. You don't have to have transitions between sentences because those are all extra words that take up space. It's also a lot easier, again, visually, if I'm standing away from your poster to see what's really important if I can see that bulleted list. So I'm not having to read across your page too much, but I can go right to the important information. What really helps with posters is that you do have options for visuals and that can take the place of a lot of words. Um, so you can use graphs, you can use images, and these can help tell the story of your research and your poster um, when you don't have a lot of words to use. So to make the graphs and your images as impactful as possible, you wanna make sure that everything is labeled. Every image, every single thing you have should be labeled. Um, when you're looking at graphs, make sure that y-axis graphs are horizontally aligned if that's possible. Make sure your graphs are easy to read. Um, make sure they're, they're big enough to read. Make sure the different points that are important, the different data points are easy to read. Um, also with graphs, try not to use colored backgrounds or grid lines or boxes because that can can distract from where your data points are and can make it more difficult to read. And then make sure to caption all graphs and images. So again, part of labeling things and images um, and, and images and graphs, but then also making sure to add a caption. So we know what are we looking at here, you know, and how is it important? How does it connect to other things? So make sure you add a caption to, to any visual that you have. So then you've got your text, you've got your images, and then you've got to think about putting it all together and how to organize it on your poster. So one of the things you want to be aware of is something called reader gravity. This is not a concept that we really think about, but we all do naturally. Um, so when we were taught to read as little children, we were taught to start on the left-hand side of the page, read to the right, go back, start on the left, read to the right, go back and start on the left. So generally, as I mentioned, most posters have two to four columns, three tends to be typical. So if you have three columns and you're doing a, a, a research poster in, in chemistry, you don't want to have your introduction or background in the first column and then next to it, your uh, method and then next to that, your results coming back to the beginning, your discussion because that's not how our eyes naturally read. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the end of the column and then we're gonna come back to the start of the column. We're not gonna jump across. And so instead you would wanna have your instruction or background, then your methods, then in the next column, your results, then your discussion, and the next column, your conclusion, maybe your acknowledgements, whatever it might be. Um, but you wanna make sure you're ordering your poster that way because that's how we're gonna read. We're gonna read left to right, top to bottom or sorry, top to bottom, left to right. Um, and so again, three or four column format and same thing with rows, about three to four rows uh, is, is what most people have. Um, you want to, when you're organizing your poster, avoid hard to read colors or distracting color schemes. Make sure you have some white space. Um, you don't want to cram everything on your poster. We'll look at some posters later. And one of the things I say about some posters is, some posters, if they try to cram too much in, there's not enough white space, they make, the posters make me feel claustrophobic. Um, Cause it feels like everything's squeezing in and there's just not enough room for everything and it doesn't quite fit and it feels uncomfortable. Um, think about how you can highlight your takeaway message. So bulletin is one way to do that. Um, making sure the important stuff are in lists, but thinking about using, you know, boxes with thick lines around them. You know, how do you get your reader to notice the most important aspect of, of your poster? 
And then, and then last but not least, as you organize your poster, make sure to include your references and your acknowledgements. Um, this is really important, again, especially as you all continue through school and people start paying you to do research, as you get grants and things like that, you wanna, you're going to want to make sure that you thank those people um, for, for giving, you, giving you money and supporting you, but also thinking about acknowledging mentors, um, TAs who have helped you with your, your research. And then, of course, making sure you have your references on there. I will say that references and acknowledgments don't have to be in quite as large of text as, as everything else, because that's generally not something people need to read from afar. If they're really interested, they'll come up and, and read it a little bit more closely. Um, okay, and then my final thought is this. Make sure that your poster tells a story all on its own. Again, for a lot of the poster presentations, you will be standing there um, delivering your presentation, which is a wonderful way to tell the arc of your story, add some nuance to the story of your research, maybe add in some fun, fun stories about your, your research, things that maybe were unexpected. Um, so it, it's certainly a much more nuanced story of your research, but the poster should be able to stand alone. I should be able to come to your poster, read through your entire poster and understand your research not going to understand every single little teeny tiny thing about it, but I'm going to understand how you got from this first column in the top left to this last column in the bottom right. Uh, because again, there will be times when you are not standing next to your poster and people are going to come look at it. There may also be times where you're talking with um, one conference participant, somebody else comes up and kind of stands back doesn't really want to engage, just kind of wants to look at your poster. Um, and, and again, you want everyone who looks at your poster to get an idea and understanding of your research um, without having to hear your presentation. Okay, so that was, I told you the first part was going to go fast and furious. Um, what questions or concerns do you have so far? Where can we find the template for the poster from the university? That's a great question. I've got the link in my slides, but let me um, let me do this so I can find it. Let me drop the link in the chat as well. Okay, the link is in the chat now. Other thoughts or questions? And again, feel free to unmute or jump into the chat. Okay, y'all seem like a confident group of folks. Oh, Samantha, were you getting ready to ask a question? Um, oh, your, your microphone is broken. Well, well, Samantha, go ahead, feel free to, to, to type in the chat um, and we'll, we'll answer your, your question as it comes up. So as I mentioned, what I think is most useful in terms of thinking about posters is to look at other posters and think about what's going well and what's not going well. Because I think it helps give you an idea of what you might want to do. And so what are we gonna do is we're gonna look at maybe four or five posters from different disciplines. Cause I think it's important. I know we might have dis different disciplines on here. Um, and we're gonna first start always with what do we think this poster is doing well? And then we'll talk about what, how do we think this poster can be improved? Um, okay, so Samantha, you asked a really, really great question. You said um, to avoid distracting colors, what kind of colors are considered distracting? Um, so anything that's too bright, um, you know, if your poster looks like it came from the 80s, got a lot of neon on it, um, probably not gonna look great. But really the practical way to think about this is think about what's accessible. Um, so you don't wanna have 
um, for example, white background with yellow writing on it, because you're not gonna be able to read that. Um, you don't wanna have too many colors. You'll notice on the UT template, um, it's gray and orange and taupe, and that's really it. Um, and the, the orange is kind of played down at the bottom because it's, um, you know, I know all of us here love it, but I don't think you would want a bright orange poster um, without any sort of sort of contrast. And, and, and Samantha, I think you'll see a little bit of that here so with, with some colors that are, that are pleasing and some are distracting. But one thing you, you certainly wanna think about is what's actually readable. Um, so not having light text on a light background or dark text on a dark background um, and really keeping your color scheme down to two, maybe three colors that are relatively muted, fairly complementary. Okay, so let's start with our first poster. Um, take a minute to look at it. And then either in the chat or again, by unmuting yourself, tell me what you think this poster does well. Okay, so Shelby said they're, they're good graphics. So yeah, they've used a lot of visual aids here. Has a good title. Okay, Reagan, yeah, you, um, th there are different sections. All right, so let's talk about what could be improved about this poster. Okay, Kristen, the font is too small, um, too much text and the graphs are too small. Okay, so Kristen, yeah, I think, um, and Cameron, you also said way too much text. Um, absolutely, there's way, way, way too much text. Um, and most of it is in paragraph form. It looks kind of like they took a paper and, and, and put it on, on a poster. Um, and you're right, the, the text is likely too small. One of the things I will admit about this exercise is you are looking at a poster that would be printed on, again, something that's large, 36 by 42 on a computer screen. So sometimes text size is difficult to judge, but I think you all are absolutely right. There's no way that this much text is going to be able to fit on here in, in a readable font size. Um, yeah, Kristen, the, the margins look small. Again, this is that white space issue, right? There, there's, there's not a lot of breathing room. Again, you leave this poster and I think, ah, you know, it's, it's getting hot in here. You know, my, my, my collar's starting to feel a little tight. I feel like I can't breathe because there's, there, there, there's not space um, between the, the columns, which can make everything feel like it's bleeding together. Other thoughts about this poster? Okay, so larger graphics. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of gray. Um, yeah, Kristen, maybe you need some more color. Um, it is very black and white. The, the subheadings, so here's the other thing that I will, will tell y'all is that um, white is a difficult color to read. Again, you know, if we think back to our childhood and when we first learned to read and pretty much every single book almost that you read growing up, the font was likely black, um, maybe like brown or navy or, or what have you, but pretty much by and large, most books that we read are printed in black ink. And so our eyes are not really super attuned to reading white text. If it's giant white text, like in the title, so you'll notice in the UT template, our titles are in white, but you're talking about like 80 to 120 point font, which is pretty huge. In general, other than in the title, I would avoid white fonts, even if it is on a, on a dark background. Uh, Nicole, that's a good question. Are the columns already present in the poster template? Yes. So, well, the columns are present. The um, lines around them are not. Some people use boxes. Some people don't. So you'll see this in a couple of other posters. You don't necessarily have to have lines around your columns. Um, and if you want them, you would have to add them manually. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, Christian. Yes, you can absolutely. You can add lines. Um, you can even make the co you can make the columns. You can make lines around the column, so each is individually blocked out. There are a couple of ways you can kind of distinguish your columns from from one another. But also, if you have enough white space, your columns will do that for you, and you don't necessarily have to have the lines. Okay, so let's look at another poster. So this one was way too much text. Um, as we mentioned, um, it, it does have the different um, headings that are easy to follow. Um, maybe not great with that, that white on blue background in terms of text. There are a lot of graphics. Um, maybe we could bring those in a little bit and make some of the more important ones bigger. Um, so y'all were all, all dead on with your, your ideas. So let's think about this next poster, which I often think of as the sort of polar opposite of the previous one. So let's start again. What do you like about this poster? What does this poster do well? It's got a unique design. It's visually really interesting. Yeah, Cameron Aaron, good, good observations. Okay, the text is fairly easy to read. You've got that dark black text on a light blue background. So the main the, the, the sort of main text is easy to read. Lots of images, lots of big images that kind of help tell the story of the poster. Relatively easy to understand at a glance, okay? Okay, what do you think should could be improved about this poster? Okay, so the background image is distracting, okay? And the margins are a little too small. And then Cameron, you said hard to follow the research journey. Yeah, the boxes seem all over the place. Some of the pictures might be missing labels. Yeah, those three pictures kind of in the sort of whatever maybe the first, first column is. Um, don't seem to have labels. So yeah, I think you all are pointing out some really <laughs> middle bit is just kind of there. Ex excellent, um, excellent observation, Kristen. Um, so yeah, a lot of um, organizational issues. They're, they're, they've got about the right amount of text and the right amount of images in terms of balance but it needs to be organized a little bit better. They don't really have three distinct columns. There are sort of these boxes here and there, and then these pictures that are kind of there, but also sort of in between columns. So really lining this up a little better would help. Um, the background image is really interesting because as some of you said, it's visually really interesting, but then it can be a little more, it can be a little bit distracting so something that would, I think, help with that would be taking these white titles. What is parasite spillback? Could parasite spillback be a cause of native species loss and local level extinction? My experience discussion. If they created three columns and, and made an opaque background so you couldn't see it through and then put those titles in there, preferably in a darker font, um, then you could still have the, the beauty of the, the background, but it would be much easier to read the titles and follow the, the story. So you could kind of have the best of both worlds as, as it were. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of other comments. Um, yeah, making sure we're labeling everything so we know what to do. And again, I think that you know, a lot of the different pieces of the research are well labeled, um, not, not as much the images, but it's also hard to know what order you're supposed to go in because you start with, you know, here's what it is, here are the objectives. And then this question in the middle seems like maybe the research question, maybe the results, I'm not really sure, but then you have the methods underneath that. And then you have his experience over here, and I'm not really sure. Maybe that should go at the beginning, uh, you know. So it's it's hard to kind of know what to read where and and how to how to quite figure that out. 
Any other thoughts about this poster? Again, I like to look at this poster and the last poster back to back because they are, are kind of opposite of one another. One had too much text, not enough in visual interest. This one has good visual interest, but not really good solid columns and organizations. They're, I, I think they're kind of both relatively problematic, but um, in, in opposite ways. And these are both, so um, the first one um, is a, a natural science. This is, is similarly a natural science. This next poster that I want us to look at is a social science. Um, so let's look at this one and, and think about what do you like about this poster? The use of color, Erin, okay. Yeah, I, I think this, I think Samantha, to your point, I find this personally to be a pleasing color scheme. Um, again, that, that is a little uh, subjective, but but I, I think it's, you know, it's not too overpowering. Um, I think some of the, the colors are kind of nice. Um, Nicole, well organized. Um, Kristen, it's not bad, yeah. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> Nicole, yeah, you can, you know exactly what each of the columns is, is going to talk about. Um, really good use of lists. So not a ton of paragraphs. There's, there's a little bit of writing um, in the, that first box and then in the methodology, but, but really a lot of listing. Um, and, and again, you can see that way you can get a, a lot more information that way. Okay, thoughts on how you might improve this poster. Could use some more white space. Yeah, Nicole, I think you're you're right. So um, there's not a lot of space in between the the three columns. And so if they could kind of move out, so there's a little bit more space that would help. Um, yeah, more room between columns. Kristen said the same thing, absolutely. Yeah, I quite like this poster. I think it, it's relatively successful. I think the main thing is, um, and again, this, this is of course, without knowing anything really about the content. So we're not judging the content, the content, the interpretation, the results could all be terrible. Who knows? Um, this is this is not my area of expertise, at least. I don't know if it's any of yours, but um, in terms of the design, yeah, absolutely. It, it is pretty, it's pretty good, right? Um, a little bit more space could really take this up to, I think the next level. So this is our example of a social science. Um, the next one, an example from business. So thinking about sort of pre-professional majors, um, this is an example from, this is an example of a poster that might be used at a, a business. So tell me what you like about this poster. It's intriguing, yeah. Easy to read graphs, good flow of information, figures being in the center, it's eye catching. Um, yeah, and I think that that's really important for business, right? It, it really kind of draws you in. Um, the, the images kind of tell an immediate story. You've got um, lots of bullets rather than paragraphs. And this is a good example. Um, again, I know I said with, with STEM posters, it's really easy to think about what you wanna title your, your uh, columns, but there's a, a fairly standard language there when you're working through research. Um, not the case in pre-professional, not necessarily the case um, in pre-professional disciplines or in the arts and communities. And they've done a pretty good job so that you know um, what you are looking at when you're when you're reading this poster, what each column is trying to do. All right, what might you improve about this poster?
Okay. Oh, that's an interesting. So Christian thinking about making sure, you know, your audience, um, you know, how people might react, um, to, to being confronted with a picture like that. Okay, the, the image is distracting, okay. okay. And I think, so this, this is always an interesting poster to show. Um, and, and I think that, that, that Kristen kind of hit it is you wanna make sure it's appropriate for your audience. And so one of the things that you might think about is where a poster like this with this kind of image might work. Um, so if you are in business and your job is to persuade and is to get a client or to um, kind of persuade people to believe your ideas, which is not as which feels a little different than it does than presenting research, um, this might work in those kinds of situations. And so um, every discipline is different. And, and sure, a picture like this is not appropriate for maybe a research project in biology or in chemistry. Um, but when thinking about what the purpose of a poster in business is, it might work. Um, it, in general, when I do these presentations, the room tends to be full of people that tend more towards to, um, STEM and social sciences. And so you're right, for your posters, probably not going to work out that way. Um, so I, I, I think your comments, um, and again, going back to this idea of thinking about your audience and who's your audience and, and what are you trying to do with your audience is, is really important to, to keep in mind. Um, Kristen, yeah, ag agree. The columns, and this is, I think this goes back to the question about, um, you know, are the black lines between columns built in? You don't necessarily need them. In this case, I don't think you need them except that, um, or well, if one of the things you could do is, do you see how these the bullet points are really far away from the text? Um, if you could move those bullet points over, you'd have a lot more white space in between your, your two columns. And then I think it would work a lot better. Um, then you'd have some nice white space. You wouldn't necessarily need lines to divide it and it wouldn't feel quite is squished because you're right right now it feels a little squished the bullet points are a little close on this side and then the text gets a little close on the other side so nicole maybe too many bullet points um yeah and again i think this is probably a disciplinary difference um in business you're you're trying to get in you're trying to get out and all bullets might work well in that situation maybe not maybe a few sentences to help give a little context um i think your your points will take it nicole all right, so I wanna look at one last poster. This is um, in the, a research poster from the humanities. Okay, all right, so tell me what you like about this poster. The old timey vibe, yeah, so the, sort of the, the map in the background is nice. It's well organized. Yeah, and again, this is another example of a discipline that's not going to have preset titles. And so thinking about how do I get my audience to go on this journey with me in a way that makes sense. Um, good spacing. Okay, tell me what you think could be improved about this poster. Okay, so not a lot of images. So maybe are there ways to do some something else with with images? Yeah, so I mean, I think you made a good point about the background. And this this is a similar point um, to that second poster we looked at. One of the things that I think could really help this poster is if you made these boxes opaque, 
you would still be able to see the map kind of in the margins um, and up top, but it would be a lot easier to read the text. I think this author tried really hard to make their text really black and bold. You can see it's kind of a thick text um, or a thick font, um, but it still is a little, it's a little distracting to have that background inside the boxes. Um, so yeah, um, like Samantha and Kristen, you made the kind of the same point. Um, so if we could, if we could make those boxes opaque, I think it would help a lot with um, being able to read the background could still be there and still be pretty and fun, but wouldn't be a distraction. Any other thoughts about this poster? So I'll tell you one thing about this poster that bothers me just a little bit. And I think this is maybe, I, 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 this is probably a personal preference. I personally would prefer if, the, if there were three full columns rather than the boxes, because the boxes aren't all the same size if you look across the rows. And that's okay that, you know, all your rows don't have to be even, but in that case, what I would do is make your column, make, make the boxes go all the way down the columns, have those subheadings. Um, I think somebody mentioned this, there's, there is good spacing in between. And again, um, putting lines around your columns um, is another way that you can distinguish space. Um, but I would probably do three columns rather than having the individual boxes, just because you can see that you've got the, the focus of research and the Juan Ruiz starts lower than in this third column conclusions does, and then you also have acknowledgements. And so that's, it's a, it doesn't feel quite as clean. Um, again, I like this poster, but I think it could be just, if you touch it up a bit, it could be a lot cleaner and crisper. Yes, I mean, having column, well, I would still box the whole column. I think you could still box the whole column, Nicole, um, not just have lines in between. I think you could have the full column box, but you would put a box around background and focus of research and the background around Cervantes and Juan, Ru Juan Ruiz, and then a box around uh, Desaias and Sotomayor conclusions and acknowledgement. So you'd have, does that make sense? Would it be better if the spacing between the boxes was the same? in the same column was even. Yeah, I think if you, I think if the boxes were equally spaced, I think it would look better. Um, again, I don't necessarily think it looks bad. And, and it, this is, I, I tend to really like really super clean organization. So it may just be a me thing. Um, and that's one thing I also always tell students is um, make sure you talk with your TAs and your professors, particularly if they're gonna be grading you on your posters. Um, to see what they think and they prefer. Because um, different disciplines can be slightly different and, and different faculty wanna see different things. Um, so I've seen some faculty say, your poster should be 70% um, images, 30% text. Some people will say 60% text, 40% images. You know, just it, different disciplines and different faculty have different leanings. Um, so all of my, recommendations or sort of general guidelines um, to set up your poster, but it's always good to get, get a little feedback from the people who are um, in charge and maybe know a little bit more about your, your discipline. So I'm gonna show and stop share. Um, so what questions do you all have? Are there any sort of lingering questions about posters and, and putting them together. How many pictures or graphs are too much? That's, or too little. <laughs> That's a good question, Samantha. I, I think in general, you you want to start with probably a 50-50 split. And I think you are safe to move 60-40 either way. 
So 60% images, 40% text, 60% text, 40% images. I think you're safe either way. Um, once you start getting into 70, 30 of either, um, that's probably when you want to get a little feedback from somebody. Yeah, and so that, Cameron, I think you ask a good question. A lot of people don't have a ton of images for for their research because it's just not, it, if you don't have graphs, if you don't have um, charts or diagrams, it may not work super well for you. One of the things that I really liked about, um, I'm gonna pull this up again, the social science poster that we saw, You'll see here in this first column under background and introduction, they, here, let me put this up. Um, they've created this graph here uh, that sort of walks you through a method. So it's, it's not necessarily an image of their research, but it takes information from their research and puts it in a graphic. So that's something you could think about doing if you're using formulas or theories or um, things like that. You know, are there ways to put those in a more graphic representation than um, than what you have? Also, think about charts. You know, if you have charts with numbers or things like that, uh, that that also works as a, a visual aid. I saw another, what if I don't have graphs or a visually interesting way to present my results? Yeah, Nicole, so ho hopefully, Nicole, that answered your question as well, is um, if you think about, uh, you know, how are there pieces of my research that I can present in visually interesting ways, um, even if it's not you know, I have a picture, like on that, that first poster we saw, if you don't have picture of, pictures of mice that you did research on, um, are there um, charts? Are there formulas? Are there other images that can help you represent what you did with your research? Yeah, Kristen, that's a that's a, a great point. You can also think about using images to kind of tell the story of your research, the background, those kinds of things. Okay, well, if there's, there's nothing else, I, that, that's, that's all I've got. Um, so I, um, the slide should be 